That's Nick. And that's Joseph, and today we're here to talk about endings, beginnings, which will be available on digital April 17th, 2020, and on demand uh, May 1st, 2020, courtesy of Samuel Goldwyn Films. It is the latest uh, directorial effort from Drake Doremus, and it premiered at the 2019 Toronto International Film Festival. What is the film of this person's I would know? Uh, I don't, so, probably his most celebrated features were Like Crazy from 2012 with Anton Yelkin and Felicity Jones and Jennifer Lawrence, uh, which this film kind of plays a bit, a bit like an inverse of. Uh, Breathe In with Felicity Jones, uh, Equals with Kristen Stewart, um, uh, uh, Zoe was his last film, which I didn't care for, and then a film called Newness. Um, he likes to make films about people that have trouble finding meaningful love. Okay, well, he was succeeded in this one. Yes. This film is about a 30-something white woman who uh, ends up moving in with her sister uh, after she's decided to quit her job and leave her boyfriend. Mm -hmm. And while she's trying to like get her shit back together, she decides to enter a relationship with two men who happen to also be best friends. Yeah. And kind of how that pans out. So that uh, 30-something year old white woman is played by... Shailene Woodley, Daphne. What do I know her from? Oh... I recognize her name, but I don't recognize oh, her. Oh, you you saw Big Li the first season of Big Little Lies. She's in that? Yeah, oh. she's, she's... I liked her. I like her look and uh, her, her vibe. Yeah, she's also in uh, White Bird in a Blizzard, the Greg Araki film, uh, Snowden from Oliver Stone, okay. uh, the, the Spectacular Now from okay. Jane Ponsel. Great. Uh, and she was in the Divergent series. Okay. Uh, so she, she, her character, who's named uh, Daphne. Daphne. Daphne uh, is in a four-year relationship, leaves it for reasons that I'm not super clear on, except that she's just made, accustomed to making poor choices. She also quits her job because her boss, she's at a party with him, and... I don't, I can't tell if he drugged her or they were both inebriated, but he takes advantage of her sexually. Mm -hmm. So obviously she's uncomfortable, quits her job, moves in with her sister who seems to have a nice life. They have a beautiful home with a guest house. She's married with a kid. Um, and it's her just saying like, she's going to take time to reset. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But it seems like very quickly she's out and about, meets a guy and then meets that guy's friend, mm -hmm. starts hooking up with them. Uh, that gets a little tenuous. She becomes pregnant mm -hmm. and isn't sure what doesn't know who the dad is <laughs> and The film just kind of ends with her deciding that she's gonna raise this baby on her own mm -hmm. without involving either gentleman mm -hmm. Both of whom don't want anything to do with her. Yeah, um, so I did like this film it Did a very good job so I live in LA, we live in LA, mm -hmm. and I think like, oh, all these like 30 something white people who live in like Silver Lake Echo Park, who clearly have money, but don't have real jobs and, you know, sort of seem to make a lot out of nothing, like mm -hmm. <laughs> drama for no reason. I, you know, I'm not a part of that world. I don't know people like that, but that's, this film did a good job of exemplifying what I think that life is like. Just creating drama for no goddamn reason, you know, this like beautiful woman who's clearly smart, she is educated, she was like a curator for, she does something with art. Uh, yeah, but, art curator. But it's very clear that she's smart, she's competent, and she just is making poor decisions oh, just yes. for the hell of it. Well, and she, cause she starts out by saying that she should be, feels like she should be doing things that she should have done in her 20s, but it, it also just is highlighting the sense of kind of how she's adrift really still yeah how, how people in their 30s are still <laughs> but of a particular i think uh d uh demographic oh yes yeah yeah mm -hmm. because yeah her mom uh daphne's mom is played by wendy malick mm -hmm. and immediately mm -hmm. when we're introduced to uh wendy malick we see that that character is dissatisfied with her daughter mm -hmm. like she's kind of a fuck up and yeah <laughs> so the tone is said very quickly that daphne is just not used to making good decisions mm -hmm. uh Go ahead. Oh, and then the, the, the lovers, the new lovers are played by uh, Jamie Dornan and Sebastian Stan. Uh, Jamie Dornan obviously is like this attractive, like author. writer, professor who has this fabulous home. So obviously has a ton of money. The other guy, uh, Sebastian Stan, Frank. Is he from Political Animals? Yeah. There's another, so oh. yeah, he play, he's the gay son in the Political Animals. For, he looked familiar to me. Uh, and then Lindsay Sloan, who plays her sister, was in the TV set with Sigourney Weaver. 
Sigourney Weaver. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, he is... It's not clear what the hell he does, but it's like these two attractive guys uh, who look very similar. She's interacting with them. They're involved with her for reasons that don't make sense to me. Yeah. Like, especially yeah. Jamie Dornan's character. Yeah. Like, he's a successful, attractive man. They're both attractive, but it's like, she's basically telling him, like, I ain't shit. I'm, like, in a bad position in life. I need to get my shit together. And he's all about her. Um, but, yeah, she just kind of, like... It felt very relatable because I can see if I had a lot of friends back when I was in my 30s, I feel like they would behave this way. Like, oh, I'm going to have a summer romance for no good reason and just ruin ruin my shit for a year. Yeah. yeah. (laughs) Enter bad relationships just so I can be miserable. How hurting, hurtful you can be. Um, You know, it it did... uh, like a couple of Dramus films that I liked but not loved, like there, there are things that really do ring true in here, um, such as kind of being unable to make uh, the right decision and just, you know, living in the moment, going with the flow. And I think the problems that that can lead to, yeah. uh, if you're not kind of thinking at least about your near future. Um, it was co-written by Jardine Lebert. Um, and, and like I said, this kind of plays... I think it's closest to some of his earlier films that were beloved, like 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 Crazy and Breathe In. Um, okay. Uh, Daphne uh, also has like two friends who she like meets periodically to kind of have like they have a name for it, but it's like girls' night where they like sip wine and paint. Mm-hmm. Um, one of the friends is played by Kyra Sedgwick, who's significantly older yes. than Daphne, and then another person. But even their conversations feel very. Um, accurate to what I imagine people like them would sound like. Oh yeah, but there was some, there's a, one scene in particular with Kyra Sedgwick that I thought was a, a, extremely poignant where she talks about how the next person she should be loving is herself. Sure. <laughs> well, what I was going to say is I think the reason why this film works so well for me is because I think the, like, the demographic of the characters, it is sufficiently vapid and pointless <clears throat> and I think that was the point. Yeah. Like, it feels very L.A., very, like, I'm in my 30s and my parents have money or I have a trust fund or, I, you know, somehow, like, everything will be fine. Mm-hmm. Like, in the background, everything will be fine. They're not going to be homeless or hungry or poor. So it's like, let's just fuck up our lives for no good reason because we know we'll be okay in the end. And I think this film, at least for me, I think that's why it felt... Um, good because it did a good job of representing those kinds of people which is why i, I really liked the a film two films before this he did called newness which was about straight people and hooking up and having meaningless sex through apps which i a lot of that felt very familiar and very um authentic to me as well but a lot of people had kind of frustrated reactions to that film sure i mean i, I didn't see that but i think the writing in this film felt uh, authentic yes um i also enjoyed the music mm-hmm I really like the music in this film. Uh, I don't have anything else. Uh, no. What would you oh, give it? Ex- I thought it was funny. Oh, a working title, a potential working title for this film was No, 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 Yes. Interesting. <laughs> okay. Um, what would you give I it? I would give it three out of five stars. I would give it three out of five. I th- only because I think, I mean, I would, I would give it higher, except I think that this appeals to a certain sensibility that I think maybe some people will find too vapid, oh, too and, superficial. And, and also, yeah, I, I, I also, w- watching these films about women that are going to raise a child on their own and how there isn't a conversation about what that's going to look like, how that's going to be done. Like, it's just taken for granted that this, this white lady is going to be fine. Um, th- and that that is what she should do, is that's going to ground her. But see, I think that's why the story is good, is because all of these assumptions that people like her and her little group and the two guys she's dating, I think in my mind, because I'm not a wealthy white person or come from that world, in my imagination, I think like, oh, people like that, they just, everything will be fine. All my poor ass decisions will all work out in the end because someone's going to save me. I can have a fucking baby and not include the dads and it's okay. And I think that that's why this film, to me, the story is good because I, I do think that's how these characters would. Be. I I do. I think I just want to, I'm always wanting to subvert things and have somebody, you know, use logic. But, uh, and since that doesn't happen, uh, I'm done. Okay. All right. Bye. bye.